Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're to welcome to all gathered here in the Lord's house. We praise you, praise God for you, and thank you for being with us today. And for those watching and listening online and through the phone service, God's blessings to you. Please know that you are welcome and invited to join us downstairs following the service today for a meal hosted by the Yaz group, the Young and Heart Seniors group are welcoming you and wanting you to come downstairs for the meal following our service tonight at 5. Um, they, they have a, a great meal prepared. We look forward to that. The collection boxes are available for us as we gather for the hygiene drive. That hygiene drive supports our community and those in need. That hygiene drive goes from February 11th through March 3rd. You can bring in your items anytime throughout that period. And also, finally, please note that the Easter flower order form is available for you to grab on the Welcome Center desk. That order form is uh, yours to take and fill out. And then as you do so, please have them back, have the order forms back by February 26th. That would be helpful as we get those Easter flowers ordered. Those are the announcements this day as we gather in our Lord's house on this midweek service, Lent 1. Our bell will call us to worship, and then we will begin with the singing of the opening hymn, 609, Jesus sinners doth receive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, keep us from passing by the cross and failing to acknowledge the love revealed there in the cross in the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus. Help us as we make our way through Lent and this time of reflection upon our Lord's crucifixion so that we may be ever renewed by our contemplation of his suffering for our salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregate, you may please be seated. Our first reading for this evening is from 2 Samuel chapter 11. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David arose from his couch and was walking on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful. And David sent and inquired about the woman and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she had been purifying herself from her uncleanness. Then she returned to her house, and the woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah went out of the king's house and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. When they told David Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, Have you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah dwell in booths. And my lord, Joab, and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. And David invited him, and he ate in his presence and drank, so that he made him drunk. And in the evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting, and then draw back from him that he may be struck down and die. And as Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there were valiant men. And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and some of the servants of David among the people fell. Uriah the Hittite also died. Then Joab sent and told David all the news about the fighting and he instructed the messenger. When you have finished telling all the news about the fighting to the king, then if the king's anger arises, and if he says to you, 
Why did you go so near the city to fight? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, the son of Jerobesheth? Did not a woman cast an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died at Tabiz? Why did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and told David all that Joab had sent him to tell. The messenger said to David, The men gained an advantage over us and came out against us in the field, but we drove them back to the entrance of the gate. Then the archers shot at your servants from the wall. Some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. David said to the messenger, Thus shall you say to Joab, Do not let this matter displease you, for the sword devours now one and now another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it and encourage him. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she lamented over her husband. And when the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for you, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. I invite you to please arise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O oh Lord. While he was still speaking, Jesus, Judas came one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you have come to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus, stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, 
Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. We confess our Christian faith this day using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We make confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the sermon hymn, which is 423, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. Grace and peace to you this day from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A text which engages our lives as we continue that sermon series on the crucified King is from Mark chapter 14, verses 10 through 11. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. 
This, dear friends, is our text. Betrayal. Where does that rank on your list of most grievous sins? Especially when it perhaps involves betrayal of trust, betrayal of confidence, betrayal of friendships. In those moments when it seems like that betrayal was calculated in cold fashion. Well, as the old adage goes, what is the best way to break up a friendship between two guys? Put a woman in the middle. Thinking about betrayal, feelings and decisions seem to be cold and calloused, calculated when tempers run hot in those moments of feeling like you have been betrayed. Hot-headed sinners are not only in our day and age, but also found throughout the pages of Scripture. You see that in the Word of God as well. The types of sins we deal with are the very types of sins that God's people dealt with. And it said in our Old Testament passage, these actions of David displeased the Lord. You have those moments too, don't you? Displeasing actions toward God and toward each other. Those types of sins where you boil over, you lose it in an outburst of rage. Lust and anger and mad cravings of the flesh for all that is forbidden. Adam craved and Adam grabbed for that which was not his to have. King David, in our lesson today, boiled over with lust for Bathsheba, the bathing Bathsheba on the rooftop. And what did he do? She was the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. He planned in cold, calculated fashion to have Uriah murdered, slaughtered like a lamb, covering up his grievous sin. Peter's temper flares, and he becomes a little hot-headed as his sin boils over in defending Jesus and cutting off the ear of the high servant's priest, who we know whose name was Malchus. Anger. The Hebrew word for anger is the word af. It means nose. It also means hot-tempered. You think about the hotness of a burning nose, the nostrils flaring, the cheeks becoming puffed and red. There is a physiological reaction that takes place when we become hot-headed. Some sins are hot and some sins are cold. Cold, coolly calculated, planned and plotted. The ones that take some timing and some patience to carry out. Those cold, calculated sins are also sins that we carry. Adam in the Garden of Eden thought through quickly on his feet how he was going to deflect the blame to his bride, Eve. He comes, with the, he comes up with the excuse to God in the moment of being accused by God of what he has done. He says to God, the woman you gave me, she tempted me and I ate. Well, it didn't take much for Adam to throw Eve, his wife, under the proverbial bus. It didn't take much for King David to throw Uriah to the proverbial wolves. Nor did it take Judas much in his duplicity to betray Jesus, his Lord and Master, with a kiss. And neither does it take much for us as well. Now that's cold. I'll raise my hand because I too find myself in that same camp. In the fictional book, Dante's Infernal, or Infernal, you may know it as Dante's Infernal, the author reserves the innermost place in the circle of hell for not murderers, not those who are slothful, but for betrayers. And the innermost circle is where he locates Judas. Yes, Judas' soul is there in the author's eyes. Not to be surrounded what you would expect by flames, but by a lake of ice. To spend the eternity frozen in the ice because he had such a frozen heart when he lived. Now a fictional work, of course, but it locates the coldness of Judas' action with a place specific for him. Judas' sin of betrayal seems so cold. So cold-hearted, 
For Zechariah in the Old Testament even talks about this. He prophesies in these words from Zechariah. I told them, if you think it is best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter, the handsome price at which they priced me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the pot, the house of the Lord, to the potter. 30 pieces of silver. A pretty good price in Judas' mind to betray his Lord and his master, his friend and his rabbi. This betrayer did so with hypocrisy. He did so with deception. He had to do it with secrecy in order for it to be carried out. Just at the right time, he used a gentle, affectionate, seemingly innocent kiss. The sign that in the pitch of night, when everyone looks like everyone else, this guy is your guy. He's the one. You arrest him. That's the one that gets me the 30 pieces. Because Judas knew all along what he was going to do. But at the Last Supper, Judas says it so innocently. His very own disciples would betray him, and Jesus knew this. And so Judas has the gall to say to Jesus, Surely not I, Rabbi. To which Jesus says, Yes, it is you. That kiss, that sign of warmth and affection, coldly used to signal the beginning of the end. Now that's cold. Now before you go saying those actions of Judas are so despicable, so horrible, so how could he ever do that? You are the one. As Nathan pointed out to David, Atah Haish in Hebrew, you are the man. You're the one who also has cold actions of heart and of mind. You want to call him Judas, but look in the mirror. It's you. It's me. We have been disloyal for so much less than 30 pieces of silver. We betray our brothers and our sisters in the faith. Oh, we smile nicely at them, don't we? At the coffee table, at the back room, but behind their back. We're so quick to pull their name into the conversation, triangle them, make light of their ex actions and activities. We betray them for so much less. Supposedly, they didn't do what we wanted them to. It's hard not to be a cold-blooded gossip. But dear friends, Lent is the time when we sincerely reflect and come to grips with repentance. In those hot and cold places of our hearts, we repent. Whether they are hot or cold sins, it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be lusting like King David or betraying like Judas. We deserve God's eternal, eternal and present punishment. But tonight, God doesn't just put you in hell's inner circle. He allows you to sit at the feet of the cross, to look up to that cross, and to reflect on the goodness of God for you tonight, that he reserves a place for you at the foot of his son's cross. And dear friends, as you look up that cross, I simply ask you to marvel at the son of God who saw it all coming. He knew what was in store for him, and yet he willingly went the cross. He willingly went into the hands of sinners. He was crucified for you. And he didn't put up a fight. He didn't talk dirty back to them. He knew it was all coming. And wonder of wonders, he let them. He let them. Friend, do what you have come to do. He wants to be handed over, dare we say. He wants to be delivered into the hands of men. Oh yes, Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me. But he knows that if it is God's will that he should be betrayed, he wants to do it. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. What an incredible statement for us this Lent. The Son of God betrayed, the Son of God forsaken, the Son of God abandoned and delivered into death for you. For before the foundation of the world, God knew the costly price to deliver you. 
And so he did it. And ever loyal to his heavenly father, Jesus endures the betrayal of Judas, the betrayal of the world, the betrayal of each and every one of us. Given into the hands of sinners, we can give thanks for this one who has come for us, that we might have a better king than craving Adam and lustful David. Jesus is our crucified king, willingly betrayed with a kiss for us, handed over aggressively, seized for us. So simply we say, thank you, Jesus, for your willingness to be handed over for me. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the garden of Gethsemane, you suffered the agony of drinking from this cup of your Father's wrath, being betrayed by a kiss from one of your own. Give us strength to remain awake as we now wait and watch for your coming again, knowing that the Father's wrath against us has been satisfied by your bloody death and vindicating resurrection. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We rise as we continue with prayer. Let us pray for all people of God and for those not yet of his kingdom. Gracious Lord, whose ear is open to the prayers of your people, hear our prayers for the sake of our King, Jesus Christ. Keep us from being friends with the world and enemies of your kingdom. Bless those who serve you in the church, in every office, and those whom they serve in your name. Lord, hear our prayers for the sake of our King, Jesus Christ. Raise up wise and honest leaders who will act to protect us from all our enemies and encourage virtue in all the people. Lord, hear our prayers for the sake of our King, Jesus Christ. Descend into the depths of our afflictions and their despairs and raise us up by your grace. We and all who suffer in body, soul, or spirit, give us patience in our trials and confidence that your grace will support us through the day of trouble. Lord, hear our prayers for the sake of our King, Jesus Christ. Open the hearts of our enemies and those who do not yet know you, that they may be converted to faith and believe in Jesus Christ and honor him with all their good works. Lord, Hear our prayers for the sake of our King, Jesus Christ. Come to us in all of our needs, that we may go forth and serve our neighbor in your name, showing forth to others your compassion and love. Lord, hear our prayers for the sake of our King, Jesus Christ. And finally, open your word that we may hear the voice of our Savior and always believe in his name, Give us a renewed sense of the steadfast love revealed when our Lord stretched out his arms in suffering for our sake. And hear now the prayers of our hearts that we bring before you in a moment of silent prayer. We pray for these and for the sake of the whole world. Lord, Hear our prayers for the sake of our King, Jesus Christ. Hear us as we pray and as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join in Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night 
For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.